we will apply unprecedented financial pressure on the Iranian regime. The leaders in Tehran will have no doubt about our seriousness. Thanks to our colleagues at the Department of Treasury, sanctions are going back in full effect and new ones are coming. The sting of sanctions will be painful if the regime does not change its course from the unacceptable and unproductive path it has chosen to one that rejoins the League of Nations. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo just hours ago putting Iran on notice. But what's the real story about how these sanctions are going to impact U.S. and global businesses that already, having been given the green light about a year ago, jumped back into the Iranian market when the original deal was put into place? Ben Am Ben Tal Eglou is one of the world's top experts on Iran, its internal politics and military. Uh, sir, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Secretary Pompeo says... These will be the most painful in history. Can you give us an idea, if you were to guess, what the new ones are supposed to look like and which sectors of the business world, because we've got an investor audience here, would be affected by this? Well, thanks for having me, and thanks for that kind introduction. <laughs> I think for the business world, the name of the game is risk aversion here. You, you want to know your customer's customer. Due diligence and compliance will be the name of the game. And ultimately, because you don't know your customer's customer and because the IRGC owns or controls so much of the Iranian economy, uh, the name of the game will continue to be risk aversion. Um, it's up to Washington to look to recreate the sanctions pressure that existed in 2010 to 2013. So it's going to be back to the future here. If you did not invest from 2010 to 2013, 13, you likely shouldn't hear. Okay, let's talk about some of these companies that already dove back in. U.S. companies, for example, we're talking about General Electric, some of the pharmaceuticals, you had Boeing, and those were the names that already had some deals, and, and European names as well, Airbus, Total. Uh, here are some U.S. companies again, Procter & Gamble, Pfizer. Uh, but when you look at what these would look like, does this mean that you have to stop, drop, and roll if you are a U.S. company right now and end everything? Total is already saying it's going to put on ice a natural gas project that it was supposed to start on the ground in Iran, not because it's an American company, it's a French company, because it's worried it's going to be swept in by what are called secondary sanctions. Talk about that those. That's right. Right now, the U.S. is looking to not only go after Iranian banks and businesses, but those who help Iran's illicit financial networks and those who do business with the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps or financial institutions they own or control. And Total is very important to note here. I'm glad you brought it up because Total was very risk tolerant during the sanctions incubation period. It was very hard to get Total out of Iran the first time. And now that Total is saying if there is no waiver by November, we will wind down and terminate our operation in the South Pars gas field, then every other company should be looking to get out as fast as possible. I want to show you a tweet that Richard Grinnell, who is a brand new ambassador to Germany, uh, had put out. He said, as at real Donald Trump said, U.S. sanctions will target critical sectors of Iran's economy. German companies doing business in Iran should wind down operations immediately. Well, I'm not sure they're going to, but Total, for example, says it will because U.S. banks account for, what, 90 percent of Total's global financing. So what kind of uh, extended arms of this uh, squid are we talking about? If you, do, if you get financing from U.S. companies, what if you have lots of U.S. shareholders? Is that enough of a connection where you have to stop doing business in Iran? To me, it would be. And honestly, if you touch the U.S. financial system, there is a risk that post-November 4, as the U.S. tightens those sanctions that it's already reimposed and looks to go beyond that with additional sanctions and designation, that company could be in jeopardy. Now, Germany and some Central European countries are actually quite interesting because they may look to try to create a carve-out to sanctions and not actually work with uh, big multinational firms headquartered in Europe, but rather small and medium-sized enterprises that only do business with Iran. I see. So they're not the ones to look at here. I think that the bellwether are the big firms publicly traded or state-owned or controlled. Well, EU exports, as we say, $13 billion to Iran, up 66 percent uh, recently, certainly. So we'll be watching it. Ben, I'm Ben Talablu. Uh, thank you for your expertise. We appreciate it. Thank you for it. having me.